Thank you for joining us. In the last episode, we got exhausted by sticking a pipe in a box, repeatedly. However, we have now decided not to be silenced and we will proceed with blowing hot gases at you in the form of the next episode. I hope you enjoy. This is sort of where we left off uh, last time, where I was uh, making a hole and I was sticking things in a hole and it worked out well. Then I scratched uh, the location of it into the, the, the tube. I was thinking about this and uh, I kind of knew that I was not going to get that welded in a very good location without some something. So. I came up with an idea. Let me show you. Take that comment section. <laughs> Now we wait, <laughs> and now we wait. Well, that seems to have worked. I guess a test fit will tell us whether it is uh, still in the correct position. Well, it is there, and the inside looks kind of like that. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's there. It's not as, it didn't fit as well as I had hoped. But that's okay. That's, that's just fine. It is stainless steel and it warps. I'm fine with that. And this is also quite thin and flimsy still. In hindsight, maybe I should have welded some reinforcements here before I hot glued it onto there. But the hot glue method actually worked quite well. Not a total failure, not a total success. Let's take it off and see how much it springs out of place. With the pipe tacked well into the box, there's a few things I need to do or want to do before I start making the internals of the box. One of those things is that the box needs to have captive nuts otherwise you'd have to snake your hand in through the exhaust and hold the spanner in there and I don't think that's really very feasible. So I need to weld on some nuts behind these so that when you come to put the box on the truck you can just put the bolts in. And to make that a little bit easier, I also want to make a little bit of a lip thingy on top of there so that you can just put the box on the bracket and you don't have to worry about uh, it falling down and trying to hold it uh, with uh, four hands or four arms and stuff like that. So that'll make it a little bit easier. So let's do that before we start thinking about the interior decoration. Once again, I've spent way too long fiddling with some small things like these nuts. This is basically two stainless steel M8 nuts welded together and then capped with another piece of stainless steel. And there's four of them. 
these two pieces here are just some pieces of stainless steel. They're supposed to be the little lip that the bracket is uh, corresponding to and the box rests on these lips aiding the removal and refitting of the box. Yay! Hours fiddling with nuts. Spent a stupid amount of time rolling these captive nuts on on the inside and I have also been very well reminded that stainless steel warps like anyway now I need to figure out the the compartments and the internals of the, the silencer and uh, my brain hurts all right, let's see what we can come up with. I'm sure I can screw this up somehow. After a few tries, I now think that I've figured out this sheet steel cutting lark. The absolutely first thing that I do is to check that the sides are square. This hopefully means that when I draw straight lines across the sheet, I won't get them too wonky. I then mark out the cuts on the sheet with the sharpie, longest lines first. I then measure the distance between the edge of the base and the blade of the circular saw using a measuring stick type thing. I then get the track saw rail and I use the back edge of it. This part has got a raised bit, so I also need to raise the saw blade a bit so that the motor of the saw clears the track. In fact, I need to raise it quite a bit more so I don't cut my table in half. I then try my best to position the track with the aforementioned measuring stick. I also try to remember which side of the sharpie mark the cut goes onto, double checking if required, and it often does as my memory is very good, albeit a bit short. Then I do all I can to clamp it all down, without moving anything. I position the cut between the two slats on the table. That way I don't wave any flappy bits in the air. This is apparently frowned upon and I refuse to answer any questions about it on the advice of my legal team. And then I probably check the measurements again just to make sure. Then it's finally time to cut. Make sure you don't cut against the grain. Steady on lad, even push, let the teeth do the job. Now we have steel glitter all over the place. Unclamp it all and clean it up before it gets where it shouldn't. Then get the rotary eraser and spin it on the edge to get rid of the burrs. Be mindful that sometimes the burrs can fold over themselves and hide in a sneaky way. Go get them lad. Once the burrs are gone, you're done and you can repeat the process if needed. Once the sheets were cut, it was time to make the holes in them. Again, I'm fighting with my dull drill bits to get the pilot hole drilled. I later learned that I should have just used the drill on the hole saw to do this, but I ain't no clever. And I'm still surprised at how efficient the hole saw is. A bit of patience and some lube, and we had penetrated both holes in no time. I used the electric angry end to spray some more metal glitter all over myself, and as a side effect, I had deburred the holes. Fabulous! Then the easy task of cutting off the perforated tube followed. I felt like I was on a roll. Another day in the Empire of Dirt. I was a little bit disappointed last time I worked on this Zorst project because it felt like all I had achieved was to tack the, the bend into the box and then I was fiddling with these nipples a lot, uh, the captive nuts. And then I managed to cut two pieces of stainless steel sheet, drill a hole in each of them and cut one piece of perforated tube. And that just didn't seem like very much progress. However, I'm very pleased that I stopped at that stage because it now means that today I get to do the fun stuff that is primarily welding and then see if I can finagle this one into there and take up some of that uh, bending and distortion that the welding caused. I 
I've been working my brain quite a lot about what I need to do to be able to weld where welds need to be, i.e. get the welding torch in place. And one of the things that uh, is really taxing on my little brain is that uh, I have never built a box like this before and it is very weird for me to think about the order of how things go together. So it's been a lot of brain power uh, wasted on that. But one of the things I've figured out is that if I make this central chamber on the table and then try to put it in, then I can weld from each side when it's in the box. I'm hoping that it'll become clear later. But the first thing that I want to do is I want to weld this one with uh, 130 millimeter space and then the perforated tube in here. And uh, yeah, I also want to lift it up maybe, maybe uh, five millimeters so that the tube sticks out. But uh, I also now need to make some spacers in between here so that uh, when I take these uh, spacers out, the, the, the blocks out, then uh, it will sit uh, in a rigid fashion when I push it into the box. And that means that I can then squeeze the box where the, it's warped and distorted and hopefully I can weld it together and the box will be more of a square box rather than something that uh, Picasso painted. Yeah, a plan. After a bit of uh, quality time with the bandsaw and the sander, I've got four of these type uh, coupons or standoffs or whatever you want to call them. You can call them Bob or John or whatever you want to. But their job is to keep this plate separated from the other plate. I'm now going to weld these ones onto here and then I'm going to weld some more over here somehow. The uprighty thingies are now welded to the uprighty plate, so I'm gonna downright weld them down to here. And uh, using the 130mm stack there and some clamps and some more clamps and some clamps and the squares and things like that, so I think I've got it pretty much uh, clamped down. The only thing that I'm a little bit uncertain on is how am I gonna get the the torch into there and make sure that it, uh, it all gets welded. The two chamber walls are now welded together with the standoffs. So the next thing to do is to weld this perforated tube in here and to do that I'm going to raise the bottom or top off uh, five millimeters off the, the table that way it sticks out a little bit and, uh, something like that My Picasso sculpture is coming along quite nicely. This little thing here, uh, and even if I try to keep it uh, as neat and uh, straight as possible, it's stainless steel. Stainless steel combined with uh, not very much skills in welding stainless steels yields uh, Picasso sculptures. So now I'm going to try to figure out what more I need uh, to do to, to this part before I weld it in. And my idea was that at the bottom here I will have a little bit of a, a swirl thing going on, so maybe some baffles and things like that to break up the, uh, the pulses from the engine. Uh, on top of here, I don't really know. Uh, so 
more brain activity and then probably some more Picasso style stuff too. I decided that I would put on a small bend on the inlet tube and thus, hopefully, guide the gases into a circular pattern. On the tube that connects to the other chambers, I decided to put another tiny piece, but facing away from the inlet, so the gases would have to do some work to level up. As usual, when things get a little bit taxing on my brain and my focus, I, uh, I don't film as much, because I, I don't really know what I'm trying to show you. But uh, I just caught myself uh, going quite far with the progress. Uh, I'm now trying to clamp down the interior part with the, with the chamber and things onto here. And uh, everything is bent and skewed and warped and typical stainless. So I'm just trying to get things tight and put down a few tack walls. As you can see, the, the walls have big gaps in them at the moment. So, so I'm trying to not get ahead of myself. I'm trying to be very meticulous, do one thing at a time and just take my time, make sure everything fits up and then just carefully add a little bit of tack here and there. The progress is slow and it is annoying because everything is warped. So my my efforts are, yeah, they're not very cinematic. Anyway, I better crack on and I'll, I'll make sure to include you as much as I can. At this stage, I didn't really know what to expect, except for Total Warpage. Is that a band name? Anyway, I was quite concerned about the amount of warping that this all would cause. As you can see, I spent a lot of time clamping things down and then only adding very small tacks. However, I added a lot of them. The first tacks were quite promising. With the clamps, I could persuade the steel to be straight and I could get the gaps very tight. The process turned out to be carefully clamping and adding as many clamps as possible. Then carefully tack weld the first tacks and then add more until there was a tack about every 20 to 30 millimeters. Unclamp it all and then try to find another way to clamp it with a reasonably comfortable welding position. Keep repeating this until it was all tacked. Then do it all again, but this time stitch weld it so that it would be as solid as possible, without too many Picasso influences. Internally I was battling the impatient me that wants things done quickly and the perfectionist that wants things done as well as it possibly can be done. I don't know who won, but the fight was exhausting. Yesterday when I got out here, I was like, Noni, and this morning I'm more like, Noni. Uh, the reason is my love-hate for stainless steel. I know my welding skills aren't up to par when it comes to welding stainless steel. And the consequence is that we have a lot of warping. Stainless steel is a little bit of a female dog when it comes to to welding and distorting and its heat properties. So today I'm basically just going to fight that and see if I can put these things to right. So hence being a little bit noni. After some brain activity I think the next steps are to cut the panels. Uh, I have a plan but I'm not going to say it because it'll probably change by the time I've actually finished the sentence. So I'm just going to start cutting some more panels and hopefully we will make good progress.
I know we're up to high speed here, but let me explain this bit. When I made these panels, I didn't know exactly how long they needed to be, so I erred on the longer side. The consequence is that they stick out a bit, you know, circa 1-3mm. to three millimeters. So now I first need to grind them flush and straight with the outer edge, then I need to grind off the thickness of the front panel so it can be recessed in between the side panels. Catfish? I now have the front panel cut and I bent a lip here to keep it straight and then I have angled it into the, between the sides. So the next step is for me to warp this into oblivion. Some call it welding. First I'm positioning the panel so that there's one sheet thickness space at the top. Then I clamp it down to the table and give it a tack on each side. Then I move the clamping bar further down and I clamp the whole box to the table. This way the bar is flush with the top of the side panels. Then I take the other clamps and clamp the front panel to the clamping bar. This way the panel is also flush with the top of the side panels. Squeezing peasy lemon is easy. this feeling that it was not a good idea to take the break before I started welding. And I had this feeling that I was jumping ahead a little bit. But uh, it, it went so well and, I, and then I managed to, to do the tack welds really well. I mean, that, the, I mean it's, it's kind of flat. But then when I was welding I started smelling this smell. Let me see if you can detect what uh, I might have forgotten. Mm. Yeah. That's the protective film. So now I'm going to try to get the film off where I can reach it. And then... The rest is just gonna have to burn away. Sorry Mother Earth, but I screwed up on this one. The box is now in situ. The bend has moved a bit, uh, which is not a bad thing. Uh, it just needs sorting, and I think sorting it is uh, uh, is easy because we need to add a flex joint, and we have two, so I might add two. So I think adding the flex joint at the top uh, and uh, increasing by about 10 millimeters would allow there to be a little bit more space between the the, uh, the bush there and the exhaust. Then if I add the second one in there, it allows a little bit of movement there. But it might be that I have to undo that those tack wells and twist the, the pipe a little bit further upwards. So not a problem, some adjustments. The front is looking okay here. Uh, that bolt there uh, started cross threading, so I'm not going to put that in. I'll probably enlarge the holes a little bit uh, Maybe just make them a little bit oblong so that they it's easier to fit fit things there And the back everything is good uh, the, the box is very rigid and sturdy The only thing that I'm going to do now is with this bracket is ex Exactly as I thought I'm gonna cross brace it to down there and then I'm gonna cross brace this bit here Which I actually don't think is needed because the box itself is so sturdy uh, 
then we need to figure out where the, the tube is going to exit and where it's going to go. It's a little bit deceptive having the tank this far away because it, it kind of makes me want to aim the pipe and tube down to there which is not what is supposed to happen because if we look from the top we see that the habitat will be somewhere here and it probably will be out at the same length so habitat down to there uh, yeah so a lot of things to think about my brain is in overdrive and uh, but uh, yeah it's not looking too bad. I'm very pleased I put that lip on there. That makes this front really, really sturdy. Another thing that we tested was that hey, a foot doesn't interfere with the box at all. So as long as the tube exits somewhere there, it's all good. And we have quite a lot of uh, space to play with there. So yeah, that's sort of the status right now. It is Vappu at the moment uh, and it's six o'clock which means that I should be uh, getting into my Finnish character uh, but uh, yeah not too bad not too bad no nee. when I had the box on the truck yesterday I thought that the next step was going to be the exit from the box the actual exhaust exit but having molded over in the back of my head overnight I think that it is better now if we close off the bottom of the uh, box whenever I put this big thing sticking out of here everything will become much more cumbersome to maneuver and clamp and all of those things which means that I think this should be the penultimate part that goes that that we fix on the box and then the, the, the last bit should be to close in the top. So let's do the bottom first and then we'll take it from there. Before I close this compartment up, I thought I'd talk a little bit about it, so we have the visual representation here. That is the rear panel, this is the front panel, that is the outside, and this is the inside, and this is the bottom. The exhausts are coming in here, and they are going right through there. Now the idea here is that I've created a bit of a vortex, hoping to at least, create a bit of a vortex here, and then once they have a done the merry-go-round in here they go up through this hole here uh, there is a 130 millimeter chamber in here that's the full width of the whole box and this tube is perforated uh, and the idea there is that uh, all the angry puffs that are coming from the engine they get a little bit confused here and this is completely asymmetric so there's no nice ways for them to gather and mingle and dance or something like that they all have to bounce around a little bit angrily so that they are a little bit confused and dazed when they go up through the other hole and the other hole then is perforated there so the, the ones that are still angry can go and chill out a little bit to the side uh, my philosophy here is that uh, the angry puffs that are coming from the engine they need to have some space and and uh, calm time so that they can uh, be just smooth and mellow when they go out the exhaust. On top there will be another chamber that we will talk about at another time. The panels I've made are two. The first one goes down at the bottom here. I made a lip on the front and the idea with that lip is that it will keep the front of the box straight sorry so that one is there it will be butted up on the inside against that one and then this bend here is to make sure that this uh, panel doesn't bend or flex in this way that way i can weld it into here and it's also designed to be below this edge here so that the so that this panel can go on top here now, I had initially thought that I'd make a lip on this one too and I'll force it against the back edge. But 
uh, this back edge is, is bent so much that uh, yeah, I don't think there's any point in, in trying to get that one straight. Uh, so I will instead finagle this one into shape to fit that one and then it simply goes in there. That's the plan. That's as far as my brain has managed to figure things out. So let's take another step. As I was clamping the box onto the table for the task of shaping this plate to fit down there, I know. I noticed that the back actually turned quite flat. So I made an angled piece right here and I'm now going to spot weld that into place so that I have a little bit of a shelf there that I can put the uh, this plate onto when it comes to fitting it in there. Sorry for the noise again. I have now notched this plate out so that it fits around the exhaust input there. Because things are a little bit Picasso style here, I'm purely going to start by tacking it at, at the end here and then going slowly up towards the finished part here. And uh, yeah, amateur tip, if you want to exercise your patience, get yourself a sheet metal stainless steel project. Well that turned out better than I thought. No warpage or anything like that, so and the seams are tight. Uh, I'm now going to cut this lip off and this lip off and hopefully I can uh, marry these three panels together with some tack welds. Uh, so yeah, onwards, onwards, onwards. The two pieces for the bottom are now tacked on and it turned out really nice. Uh, I'm actually surprised at how flat and straight all of these are. As you can see there's a few tacks on there so not to put too much heat in. But yeah, um, so I'm absolutely knackered again so um, continue another day. Sorry for the noise in the background, but garden maintenance is happening. 
on the a la carte menu today is a few things. First, I'm going to try to position this, rather this tube in here, starting by drilling a hole and then making the actual pipe that goes out there. Uh, and also I'm going to try to reinforce this one with a bracket down like so. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Let's do stuff. Now when I have established a hole in the box front here, uh, I can put the tube in there. Try not to make too much noise. There we go. And then I put the torch, the TIG torch in underneath here and I came to the conclusion that if I leave this edge underneath here about 60 millimeters away from that then me and my skills and my TIG torch can get there and hopefully weld it. I think the next thing I need to do is to put the box on the truck and try to establish some form of angle of the dangle and the uh, pointing of the Percy uh, exhaust I mean. I think this is the decision that we have now made and this is how we're going to put it. Uh, so I'm now going to tack weld it in place and well, maybe even fully weld it, we'll see. But yeah, I think that's uh, that looks pretty good and uh, it doesn't stick out too much behind here and it doesn't stick out too much below but it still is pointing down beyond below the, the tank even if it would come a little bit uh, further up so yeah I think uh... now that I know the angle of the dangle and where Percy is pointing I want to uh, put some tack welds on this one to make sure I don't lose the, the, the positioning of it the clocking of it but I also need to cut off this tube uh, but uh, before I weld it all onto the box I was hoping to make a little bit of a thing around the edge here, basically bend this uh, steel rod around the edge there so that uh, if someone gets pierced on it they get pierced in a much duller hole and probably more painful so yeah I think that's worth doing you know safety third and all that stuff so The steel rod bending contraption is nothing more than a piece of angle iron with two parallel tubes welded to it. By putting the steel rod in between I can put a slight bend on it. Repeating this gives me a roundish shape which is good enough to clamp onto the end of the tube. I use the dinky derex to hold the thin rod in place and put a tack on. I move the dinky derex around and keep tacking till I've got the tacks all around the tube. When I'm close to closing the circle I use the dremel with a cut off disc to get the ends to meet and also a bit of hand filing so that I can sell the exhaust on Etsy as handcrafted should I want to. Then back to the dinky derricks and the final tacks. Once the ring is tacked on all round it's time to use the excess heat and a filler rod to melt it all together. I then use various implements to hide my welding shortcomings. First the grinding disc, then the angry end, then the flap disc, then a brush on the drill, and then the proxim with a grinding disc, then the proxim with a flap disc, and just like that you'd think it's factory. You saw me tack weld the two pieces together and then you saw me weld this ring onto the end there and now I need to fully weld this whilst I still have easy access to it. Then I have scored the pipe here so I can cut it off with the, the rotary cutter and then I am going to, to start tack welding it onto the box. The two exhaust tubes are welded together. As the seams are butted up against each other, it doesn't really need any filler rod, just a bit of heat and they merge together. For the YouTube certified engineers out there, this is what it looks like inside the welded tubes. 
filling the tubes with argon would make the surface look as pretty as the outside with added strength as stainless steel forms nasty crystals when it comes in contact with the atmosphere. But as you can see, it's not very bad in this case. And as I said in the first part, I don't have the time, money or equipment to do back purging, so this will have to do. Then I cut the excess of the tube off and tack it onto the box, hoping I got it right. A trial fit will tell. Yay, I did get it right. Amazing. The test fit went really well and the, the pipes actually aligned up to the engine too, so surprised by that. I thought I'd screw that one up a long time ago. Anyway, uh, yep, so this one is tacked in place. Uh, we determined that there's going to have to be a, a little bit of a support there, which I thought there was going to be, just uh, to prevent it from being pushed in, basically. But the next step is to make this bit straight and then probably put a baffle in here somewhere so that the connection between the this hole and the other hole is not that straight uh, and then the lid on so let's uh, get on with that one if the reinforcement piece seems familiar you're an enormous anorak as you spotted it on one of the panels for the bottom before I cut it off well done either way I didn't want it to feel left out so I thought it could live here in the box as a now seasoned YouTube exhaust interior decorator, I thought the top apartment seemed a bit too minimalist so I added a baffle to it. It's nothing more than a piece of steel to which I added two bends. I made the bends by clamping the piece to the table under some thick pieces of steel and bent it over the edge. The idea with the baffle is simple, no straight route to the outlet pipe. I then proceeded to weld it using some of my most horrific welds which I'm not going to show you. As the baffle was sticking up a bit, I also had to cut it down. I then decided that I'd hide all of this using the top cover. Because everything was wonky as stainless, this took quite some finagling to do. Once it was in, it was back to the routine of clamping, tacking, clamping, etc. Once the sides were tacked in place, I cut off the front lip and tacked that edge too. Then finally the rear of the lid was also tacked. <laughs> As we finished yesterday with the box now complete by the heat shields, we'll get to that in a bit, but all the panels are on, the Percy is pointing in the right direction and we didn't do anything to the, sorry, the bracket. Uh, today's task will probably mainly be fully welding the box and fixing the bracket. I kind of have this idea that I can weld a little bit on the box and then do something uh, else to let the box cool down. Again, trying to avoid another Picasso painting. Uh, and then once I have the bracket welded, I can start painting that. Again, a good thing to, uh, to weld some on the box and then do another coat of paint or something like that. So today might be a little bit scattered, but hopefully productive. <laughs> So far, this has probably been the most unproductive day in this project. I welded that weld down there and that one up there and then I cleaned these up. And the rest of the day has been uh, spent cursing over the fact that I ran out of argon. Going to get a bottle of argon that turned out to be CO2 and argon that we didn't notice until we were here. And then we had to go back and get argon. I'm ecstatic. So now I'm going to try to actually get some work done today.
with the brackets uh, now waiting for another coat of paint uh, it is time for me to start fully weld the box Two nights ago I finished the welding of the box, all the seams are now welded, let's hope they are airtight. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to grind the welds down. I see no reason to leave them like they are, they're not pretty enough to show off to the world so don't you tell anyone. The other thing I need to do before things are done is I need to fully weld the exhaust pipe and then I need to add one or two of these flex joint thingies. But uh, another thing that needs doing is that the we need to add the heat shields to the back of this box so that it doesn't fry up the wires. So there's plenty still to do, but we're getting close to finishing this project part off. Tiki de boo. This is the back of the muffler, silencer, or more accurately it is the center part of the muffler silencer. Between these two lines here, I hope you can see them, is where the heat shielding needs to go. I have an idea on how to do it, I don't have a perfect plan yet, so I'm now going to see what I come up with. The basic concept is that I want two layers of sheet steel here between the truck and the muffler. One thing I definitely want to avoid though is that there will be rocks wedged in between these sheets. So I don't really know exactly how I'm going to do that but uh, I'd like the gap on the top to be smaller than the gap on the bottom. I cut these two 
pieces of stainless steel and I've got these uh, Allen bolts underneath here. Uh, I need the space so I can get the torch in here so I can position them. Uh, that's why there's so much gap between here now. Then when I'm done with this, uh, when the bolts are welded in place, I'm going to make some bends on the two sheets and then I'm going to stack them closer and weld them onto the studs there. Not me, but these kind of studs. Okay, so we're looking at five studs here. Four of them are on the box and uh, one of the heat protection plates. So now I'm just gonna hammer the plate over these studs at a set distance that I deem likeable and then I'm going to weld it on and then I'm going to do the same with the next plate. And once those are in, I'm gonna cut the studs off because I find them threatening. Right, so here's the heat shield. Ow! Ooh, ah! No, just kidding, it shielded me from the heat. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see if it still actually fits on the truck or if I have made a boo boo. This now means that there's two protective layers of stainless steel here to protect these uh, hoses and cables and electricery spaghetti and all of that stuff. I tried to design it so that any stones that would fall on top of here has a chance to come out on the bottom rather than being wedged in there. I don't know if my thought process actually managed to do anything useful with that, but uh, you know, it's the thought that counts, especially when it comes to mechanical stuff, isn't it? Right. The next part is to work on the exhaust pipe. Uh, I need to fully weld it and add a little bit of a wiggle room with the uh, flex pipes there. So let's do that. With the tube now fully welded, I can chop it up again and insert one of these flex joints into here. Let's hope it works out okay. To actually have some chance of getting this back in the same configuration as it was, I have uh, drawn a line here. I've actually got several lines, but I've got a line uh, that uh, allows me to clock the, the tube in the right direction that way. And then I have marked 15 centimeters, 150 millimeters between two lines there. And it looks like it's pretty 
spot on at the moment so I'm going to tack it into place now and, and go try it on the truck to see how well I managed to do this. Yesterday we finished off in this configuration. The exhaust has got the flex thingy on, but what it doesn't have is the slits on the beginning of the pipe where we need to put the clamp on. So I need to do that today, and then there's a few minor details on the box that I want to finish off before I put it on the truck. That includes a little bit of finishing up here and uh, on the lip of the exhaust there. But other than that, we're pretty much done. So with a little bit of extra super duper effort, we might get this uh, buttoned up today. It is hard to describe how absolutely knackered I am. My fingers and arms are really, really <laughs> worn out. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, gripping some sandpaper and sanding off my fingerprints even more. In the first part of the build, we showed you all the material and the parts we used. However, we didn't have the clamp that is needed to clamp the exhaust onto the pipe from the truck. We ended up using a 79 to 85 millimeter Mikalor Supra W4 stainless steel hose exhaust T-bolt clamp, which cost us 1096 pounds delivered. You saw me paint the brackets and everything came out really nicely until I started using them. The paint just wasn't hard enough. It, it basically just scraped off in almost you know, like in flakes. I don't know if this is a bad paint or if it was just not uh, dry enough that it hadn't hardened and I was being impatient. So I'm not going to repaint them now. I want to let them harden and let them be and then if it is the fact that I was just being impatient I'll repaint them with the same paint. If it shows that uh, the paint is just rubbish I'll have to clear them all out and uh, paint them with some proper paint. Anyway, brackets are scratched. It sucks, but it can suck for now. Good afternoon. We have a live recording from Mog Toys headquarters. Today we have a financial report from the Unimog stock exhaust market, looking at how the Mog Toys project compares with the market as a whole. At the bottom end of the market, we have a stock exhaust system from Mercedes, which comes in at £475 or €550. Euros. Euros. At the top end of the market, we have contenders from Mog Auspuff and Atkinson Voss that come in at €1,790. Euros and €2,440 Euros, respectively. The Mog Toys exhaust undercuts the entire market with the material cost coming in at £298 or €345. Euros. Obviously this price does not include labour or sundries. With no exhaustive experience, this project has taken Yoka a full 10 working days to fabric cobble. 
For your convenience, all links to the aforementioned products are contained in the description below. Thank you, and back to Yoka in the garage. It's finally time to put the new exhaust on and hopefully we will hear what it sounds like. Yeah. We have no idea, so this is quite exciting. Yeah, you'll get to hear the first startup. Let's get on with it. going to let her warm up a little bit uh, and then we can rev her to see if she actually works more than uh, idle. Now when she's properly warm we can do a, a proper sound test and uh, see where the gases flow. I'm probably going to get some concerned YouTube citizens uh, concerned about heat and other stuff. Uh, uh, it's hot. If I were to ha hold my hand here for a long time, it would definitely burn me. But it doesn't burn me if I do that. Also, we have this uh, red microphone here. Oh, sorry. Uh, that prevents you from going closer. When I put my foot up on the step here, there is still a lot of space between my foot and the 
by the box. The standing next to the uh, bed like this is also keeping me quite away from this. So there is very little chance that you would bump into this exhaust or that you would burn yourself unless you would fall onto it and actually cling onto it really hard. So I don't think there is any danger for anyone's health with this. Also wanted to uh, point out that the, the heat shield, let's, let's get in position. We're at the back of the truck here uh, and the heat shield, this one is completely cold. So there is absolutely no danger to any of these cables or anything like that. And as you can see, with my shirt on, I can hold my hand on top of it. Also, if we look under here, oh, that was hot, but it's, there is no problem with heat up here, none whatsoever. So, that might answer some of the questions that you have. Feeling with my hand here, where does the exhaust uh, gases go? This is sort of where they are, which means that you have to be in a very, very, very low sports car, very, very, very close if you want to get this into your uh, window or coupe or something like that. Also, uh, it is basically knee height here. So again, the exhaust gases are not going to give you any trouble uh, when you are nearby. There you go, it seems to work and it is uh, definitely more compact than the original one. So thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Stick around to see how long I can hold this. I'm going to put this down there.